There are six words that I never really want to hear come morning. It is time to wake up. Yet for someone who might be younger than me, say a five-year-old, the six words they may never want to hear are, it's time to go to sleep. Oftentimes in life, people tell us things that we may not want to hear, or better yet, things that we are not ready to hear. If only there were a few minutes before that annoying alarm went off. If only there were a few more minutes before nap time or maybe bedtime. In today's gospel, Peter is shocked to hear what Jesus is telling his disciples. It is likely that Peter does not want to hear what Jesus is saying about suffering and death. So what does Peter do? He takes Jesus aside. He doesn't want to make a big show of this. But I imagine that this is how it goes. Peter takes Jesus by the hand and walks him off to the side, out of earshot of the other disciples. He doesn't want them to hear him correct Jesus. They have just chosen to literally leave everything behind and follow this person. So in a low voice, Peter tells Jesus, You have it all wrong. Don't you remember we were just in Caesarea Philippi? You asked us about the Son of Man, the Son of God. The other said things like John the Baptist and Elijah, Jeremiah. They even named some of those other prophets we never hear about. They were wrong. Me, Peter? I was right. Remember I said to you, you are the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. If this doesn't sound familiar, this was last week's gospel. And then, Jesus, still listening, Peter continues to go on and says, God forbid it. This suffering that you speak of, this dying that you say must happen, that is not what the Messiah does. You are here to save us. You cannot do that if you are dead. And so how does Jesus respond to this being taken aside? Rebuked is the word that the text uses. He looks at Peter and he says, get behind me, Satan. And then he says, you are a stumbling block to me and you are setting your mind on human things. I've heard this in many different Gospels. We hear it every year. Jesus' response can come come across quite harshly. It may seem as if Peter is telling Jesus to go away. But Jesus continues. And now he's including all of those disciples who are standing there. And he says to them all, If any want to become my followers... Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. These words to the larger group, even with the magnitude that they carry with them to take up one's cross and deny themselves, don't seem quite as harsh as the first time when Jesus is just speaking to Peter. However, these two responses, Jesus to Peter and Jesus to the whole group, are not actually all that different. Jesus has told Peter to get behind him. Not necessarily in a you are lesser, I am greater kind of way, but think of it as a come behind me so that I can lead you, so that I can save you kind of way. And then when he begins speaking to the disciples, the literal translation of Jesus' words are, if any want to come behind me. We hear it read as, if any want to become my followers, but the beauty of the original Greek, which I think is lost, has Jesus using the same word, saying, if any want to come behind me. The shared adverb preposition, come behind, is used in both places. 
Get behind me. Come behind me. The same place that Jesus tells Peter to be is where Jesus tells all others to come if they wish to choose Christ. So with that said, what does it mean to get behind Jesus? I can't help but think of the number of times when I was younger that I would hide behind my parents. Maybe if you were scared or maybe just being a little shy that day, but if you can just fit right behind that leg so you don't have to see whatever that scary thing might be in front. Being behind was a place where the one in front of me would take care of me, would keep me from harm, keep me safe. The one in front of me might even save me when the time came. Getting behind Christ is a place that saves us. But it's not always so easy to put aside our own egos and know that we are not actually in control, that we don't come first, that we do come behind someone, and that place is behind Jesus. To get, to actually get behind Jesus, we must take the time to figure out and name those stumbling blocks that are in our own way. Peter, as Jesus describes him today, is acting as a stumbling block. Peter got the title right for Jesus. You are the Messiah. We heard that last week. But Peter got the job wrong. He wants Jesus to be the Messiah, the anointed one, but without that job description that includes suffering and death. When he heard Jesus talk about suffering and death of the Messiah, Peter was completely caught off guard, a feeling that I assume most of us experienced at some time. He wasn't ready to hear those words. He needed more time, just as I may need more time in the morning before the alarm, or some may need more time with that special toy before laying down for nap. And so what does Peter do? He acts as pretty much I expect any five-year-old or myself in the morning to act. God forbid it! Peter thought he was doing the right thing. He didn't even recognize the way in which he was being a stumbling block to Jesus. Likewise, There are often stumbling blocks in our own lives that we are unable to or have not yet recognized. I think it's through spiritual reflection when we take time to slow down, to look at our lives and see where God is and maybe even see where God isn't. We can begin to recognize our own stumbling blocks, those things that get in the way of us fully 100% getting behind Jesus and what Jesus is doing in this world. When Peter hears something that he is not ready for, he reacts rather than responds. Reactions are often fast paced and come from a place of shock, maybe fear. Responses, on the other hand, they slow us down. They allow us to act from a place of understanding, a place of love. Peter reacted to Jesus so quickly that it stopped him from hearing what Jesus said next. Peter got caught up with hearing about suffering and death that he missed the part where Jesus talks about coming again in glory. Peter misses the part where Jesus talks about rising again in three days. As we take the time to look inward, to look at our own lives, the hope is that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we respond to what we discover about ourselves or others, rather than react out of fear or shock. When I take time to reflect on my relationships with others, my relationships with God, my relationship with myself, 
I often find things that I do not want to hear or find things that I'm not ready to hear. Discovering that a broken relationship is greatly affecting my prayer life or discovering that I find myself worth in what people say to me or by comparing myself to others as opposed to knowing that I am a child of God. Those are just two of the stumbling blocks, not easy to hear, that can be in my own way of getting behind Jesus. Taking the time to reflect on our relationship with God will bring to the surface things that we do not want to hear or maybe are not ready to hear. But without spiritual grounding, without this community to do that reflection in, my guess is that we react like Peter did. We may say that whatever we discover is completely false. That can't be true. Or we may discover that we just ignore whatever we find out and move on. We may stop listening to what God is telling us too early, and then we miss the good news altogether. But it's with time and with community and with the Holy Spirit that these stumbling blocks, I believe, can be transformed from things that we are not willing or ready to hear into cracks for Christ to break into our lives and transform us. The Holy Spirit helps to ready us to seek these hard truths, our own stumbling blocks that we keep hidden, and guides us to discover the places in our lives where those human things, those things that Jesus pointed out, are getting in the way of getting behind Jesus. My hope is that when we take the time to pause and discern what is going on in our own lives, our response, rather than our reaction, can come from a place of understanding and love for both ourselves and for others. Jesus shares with us today how to respond to those things which maybe we're not ready to hear yet. Jesus tells us to get behind him. Jesus tells us, come behind me. Not in that scary, rebuked way that we often hear it with Peter, but come behind me. Our constant response is to get behind Jesus, to let him save us, as did Peter and the disciples. Amen.